Roland and Heidi are absolute heroes in this house. So let's thank the Lord for them and bless them again, would you? taken me years to find out what kind of mood God is in. <laughs> it's going to take us a while to catch up to him, but that's what he wants you to do tonight. Get in the same mood he is in. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> The devil tried to gang up on me last year. I called Bob Jones about it when he first attacked, and he was shocked. He's, well, when I called him, he, he said, I knew you were calling. I was just praying for you just now, and I, I know what you're calling about. He saw the biggest demon that he'd ever seen in his life from the Middle East attack Iris Ministries and attack me in, in particular to bring Iris Ministries down. And I prayed for hours that night in the, in the dark in Pemba out by the ocean. And one thing after another happened to me. Three months ago, I couldn't tie my shoes. I couldn't put my pants on, put them on backwards, inside out, couldn't take a shower, couldn't dress myself, couldn't do anything but sleep 22 hours a day. My memory is completely gone. I couldn't remember three words in a row. I didn't know what country I was in. The doctor said I had very advanced, serious vascular dementia and that because of that I would be dying soon. And Heidi called up my son and my daughter, Crystal and Elisha, to quick fly out to Africa and say goodbye to their dad because they would never know him again. That's where I was three months ago. <clears throat> Heidi and I would both be dead today if our doctors had been right about us. <laughs> she had incurable staph infection that not the strongest antibiotics in the world could deal with in, in Africa. She went to Johannesburg. She was in the hospital for a month. They gave up on her, told her to write her tombstone. And she came back to see a specialist, Jesus, at Toronto Airport Christian Fellowship. <laughs> And they offered to lay her down on the front. They didn't want her to, to speak or to exert herself. And they gave her a pillow and blankets. And instead, she got up to speak and was healed as she was speaking. <laughs> I bought her track her running shoes before that. And the next morning, she was out jogging like she'd never left. <laughs> but three months ago, a pastor, Wayne Negrini, in Germany heard about me through our friend, mutual friend, Mel Tari, and he refused to take, accept what the doctors had said. It was just sheer raw faith. And they took me in in Germany. They have a, a kind of a, a Christian community there. They call it Community Without Walls. It's a group of Christians that live together and do everything together all through the week. They work together. They, they pray together. They worship together. They, they build together. They minister together. And they have a first-class facility there, and they just took me in free. And they just started loving on me every day. Just pure love, just the opposite of what the doctors were saying. The doctors had no faith. I was, I was dealing with Christian doctors, and I didn't find one that had any faith that I would be okay. But these Christians took me in, and they, they put me on a health food, exercise, health spa, 
squeezed orange juice, spinach, carrot juice every day, morning, noon, and night, exercising, massages, hiking in the hills hours a day, sports, just having fun, watching movies, praying together. I can't say exactly what did the trick except <laughs> sheer faith. Because as soon as I got to Germany, I started remembering things. It was just the sheer love of God. And every week I kept getting better and better and better, less and less medication. I got off the medication I was on. It didn't do any good anyway. <laughs> and last week, I, I see I've been flying for 40 years. I got my license in Southern California in 1969. And I've been flying for nine years in Africa, all over Southern Africa. But even my closest friends looked at me three months ago and said, Roland's never going to fly again. We'll have to sell the plane. We'll just have to forget that aspect of our ministry, you know, going into areas that are unreachable except by plane. And last week, I took my biannual two-year flight review in Los Angeles airspace, and the examiner said, you have a professional approach to flying. I just want to say one thing, though, and that is in my most demented state, <laughs> I could still pray. I couldn't do much of anything else, but I, I did not give up. People tried to get me to give up and accept my situation, and I just didn't do it. I could still pray. I just fixed my mind on Jesus and kept it right there and just kept praying. That's all I could do. You know, when I get, went to sleep at night, when I got up in the morning, all through the day, just attached, joined myself to the Lord, became one spirit with Him, and just stayed with Him. And just didn't listen to anything negative. And here I am. <laughs> so we can't live without miracles. We can't live without our God. We can't live without His presence. We can't live without His joy. We can't live without His spirit. We can't live without His wisdom, His plans, His design for us, the life He has planned for us. We don't want to be without Him in any way. And I stuck with Him the last two years, and we have a long ways to go. Many, many more things are happening. So many things are, people are seeing so many visions of what is yet to happen in Southern Africa in our work. There's so much that we want to do together with you. If I feel like I'm just beginning. I feel like I just got saved and then we're just starting. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, let's give it up again. <laughs>